It's Friday the 13th. Nothing's happened to us though that's spooky or scary. No black cats. We're okay so far. We're wearing hats today, because mm -hmm. why not? Mm. I decided I wanted to wear my poof hat, <laughs> and Patrick wanted to wear his jazz cat hat. So here we be. So. Oh, thank you. So Patrick and I went to therapy today. I'm not gonna eat pretzels while I do the whole thing. He had such a great therapy session. Mm. Patrick took a break from physical therapy. This is not uncommon. This happens sometimes. And it was decided that he was going to have a treatment done for something that we've decided to talk about today in this video, tone and spasticity after brain injury. So what is tone? Tone is increased muscle resistance that happens to about 75% of people with spinal cord or brain injuries. There's a harmony and a give and take between our joints and muscles whenever we decide to you know, move, to bend your elbow while your bicep contracts, your tricep you know, relaxes. When you have increased tone, none of that works the way that it should. It's kind of like there's a dial in your brain that's uh, connecting the nerve to the muscle and the dial's turned up way too loud and the muscle then is becoming way too stiff. So my left leg is always straight. It's like so hard to like bend it. Pretzels. I'm gonna call you pretzel now. He's got a pretzel right there in your tooth. Patrick's not allowed to talk until he clears the pretzel out of his mouth. Anyway, there is a range of the severity of tone after a spinal cord or brain injury. In most severe cases, the muscles and joints go into what's called contracture, and that's when you've seen those very, very poor, unfortunate souls who have their limbs stuck in a position where no amount of stretching will get them to uncoil themselves. And Patrick's um, tone, I would say, is on the heavy side of mild. He mm -hmm. used to have quite a bit of tone in his arm, but his brain uh, has retrained the muscles and the tone is reduced quite a bit. However, his leg is a different story. A completely different story. <clears throat> Patrick has what's called um, extensor tone in his left leg. The leg will go into like a stiff, mode and say that way the toes are pointed mm. straight out it inhibits mm. his ability to lift his ankle they call it dorsiflexion uh, he doesn't get that it definitely inhibits mm. his walking his gait pattern all of these mm. things are thrown off yeah. he also has something called clonus which is a form of spasticity that is in mm. in his case in the ankle it used to be and we say used to because it's not happening anymore but it used to be mm. that shake like shake. this what we wanted to tell everyone was that three weeks ago patrick received a phenol, phenol injection. Many people get Botox injections, but I had never found anyone who'd had a phenol injection, and yet the doctor was recommending phenol. When we actually got in to speak to him about it, we found that phenol is a much older drug than Botox. It doesn't require the um, <clears throat> pre-certifications that oftentimes Botox does from insurance companies. And in his experience, it's far more effective than Botox. <clears throat> However, it's much trickier to actually perform. In fact, the doctor told us that there's only a few hundred people in the country that perform phenol injections because of the fact that it's much more difficult to introduce into the body than Botox. And the way you spell this word is P-H-E-N-O-L. Yeah, it's actually infiltrated into the body using guided electrical stimulation or ultrasound. It was fascinating to watch. There is a needle that's inserted into a certain point and based on the reactions of stimulating the nerve with the needle, the doctor knows just how much phenol to um, inject. Phenol, unlike Botox, works uh, immediately. Botox takes quite a bit of time for it to actually set in. We're told the phenol could last anywhere from six months to a year, whereas Botox, I believe, lasts anywhere from three to six months. And if we are aggressive with our stretching, our weight bearing, it's possible that um, the effects of phenol could even be permanent. Patrick, before the phenol injection, could not stand barefoot and bare weight through both of his ankles. His left ankle was always up into extensor tone. Now you can. It's also caused his left foot to turn in less when he takes a step. Clonus is completely gone. He was walking, as we told you, in Florida uh, without his brace. And now they're talking about creating a modified brace for him because the phenol has allowed him to weight bear through the leg more. So we're pretty thrilled with phenol. We were nervous about it because nobody seemed to know anything about it. And we would recommend that for those who have clonus, spasticity of the ankle, uh, tightness, extensor tone in the leg, definitely look into 
phenol. Basically, all this stuff is weird. <laughs> Basically, all this stuff is weird. It is, though. Phenol! Check it out.